Hey there, and welcome back to another My Hero Academia video. And today we'll be talking about the latest episode to drop, episode 4, Inheritance, which follows off from the cliffhanger ending of episode 3, where Hawks killed off twice, and found himself under attack from Darby, and is also going to follow up with the hospital battle that's currently ongoing, so just more balls to the wall action. And I would like to say before I start that yes, I have read the manga, and I'm aware of any future plot points and details, but for the purpose of these reviews, I approach it more from an anime-only perspective so anybody can watch along and join in. And so, with all that being said, let's jump into the review. So, we start off the episode with a little bit of exposition by Tokoyami, pretty much just reminding the audience that Hawks is a premium badass and his quirk is top tier, and that even amongst heroes, the dude is on another level entirely with very few capable of competing with him. But beyond all that, he still has one downside. He can't do too well against flame-based attacks as they burn up his feathers which is obviously his main attack. So this signals to the audience that Hawks has a massive disadvantage against Darby and that his main tactic, bum rushing the villain, isn't going to work now because he'd already spent so much time trying to kill twice and thus Darby's had a lot of time to burn up a lot of those feathers. And as this happens, we see that Fat Gum and the kids he's leading away from the battlefield notice that Darby is fighting Hawks on the top floor of the mansion. And so clearly somebody is going to have to go save him in an episode or so. And I wonder who that's going to be. Anyway, the intro then plays, and we cut to the battle at hand, where Darby's freaking out at Hawks because he killed twice, screaming at him, asking how he can call himself a hero after doing something like that. And he does all this with a mad grin on his face, claiming that if his tear ducts weren't burnt beyond repair, he'd be crying right now. And yeah, that was kind of unexpected. I didn't think a character like Darby would actually care about his allies at all, and whether they live or die. Hmm. But then of course he has to immediately ruin it by complaining that Twice's quirk was really useful and it would have helped his plans come to fruition, so guess it's not as wholesome as I thought it was. He cares more because of the inconvenience of it all, not because he actually liked the guy and valued his life. That's a shame, poor Twice. And then he starts torturing Hawks and crisping up his wings good and proper whilst Hawks tries to talk to him. Get him talking to try and take off some of the pressure I suppose telling him that despite his research, he was never actually able to figure out who Shigaraki or Darby really were. And yet somehow, Darby of all people was able to find out who Hawks was, despite that obviously being classified information, as he seems to have been a specialist hero trained by the government who left his old name behind. And so, Hawks is a bit confused and demands to know who Darby is. How did he find this stuff out? And yet once this question was asked, it was clear it was going to be a character we'd all heard of before. Otherwise, why would they bother hiding his identity? Why bleep it out? Why would Hawks look so shocked and afraid? So yeah, I'm not going to spoil it, but I think by this point, it has gotten very, very obvious with all the hints and the evidence. Darby then goes on to brag that he is the member of the League that Hawks really should have been the most afraid of, the one he should have watched the most closely. And that honestly, he's never actually cared about Shigaraki or the League of Villains at all, and only used them for his own ends. And yeah, he pretty much now returns to the hero-killer stain ideology of one man can make a difference and that there are no true heroes in this world and thus all of them must die. And speaking of which, I haven't thought about that villain in a very long time. Honestly, I feel like that arc was one of the best in the show's history. It was so dark and creepy and much more low-key and yet brutal. I still like the kind of stuff we see now, but that season was really something special. But anyway, Darby then goes to finish Hawks off as we cut away to see Gigantomachia sitting in the basement, just waiting with his little radio for when Shigaraki inevitably tells him to attack. And at which point he'll go nuts and crush the hero army. That's gonna be epic. And then we move on from that battle back to the hospital, where Endeavor's charging through the hallways trying to get to Mirko, only to come across Crust and the boys, who are still trying to hold off that one high-end Nomu, with limited success, as his regeneration ability's too strong for them. Luckily though, Aizawa and Endeavor turn up and they're able to help Crust turn the tide before we return to Mirko, who's still proving herself to be an utter badass, fighting off the other high ends with just one arm. But due to the fact that the Nomu were beginning to acclimatize and awaken their power, plus the numbers game playing a part as well, she isn't really able to hit them anymore. And it's all she can really do to even dodge their attacks at this point. And honestly, this is how you make a fan favorite character. She's hardly appeared in the show before this, just a couple of small appearances here and there, and then when she finally makes a proper impact on the story, she's just a relentless badass in every way possible. They have her be both likeable, and yet powerful, and yet also the underdog, and that's very compelling. But anyway, since she feels like she has no choice, she decides to try and bypass them and go straight for the doctor to ensure that this doesn't get any worse, and along the way, she gets a massive gash on the hip, 
loses some hair, and has a chunk ripped out of her leg, and yet she presses onwards. Arriving in the chamber, and with no hesitation, doesn't bother with the doctor who's in the middle of having a cry that she's even managed to reach him at all, and she just starts trying to destroy the test tube that Shigaraki's floating in to ensure he doesn't join the rumble too. Of course, the trauma doesn't stop here for her, and the weird head Nomu impales her leg, and she just keeps going. Kicking the tube whilst Endeavor arrives to hold off Weird Head, and the other heroes, Arrays Ahead, Present Mike, Crust, etc., they all start fighting the other Nomu in the room. But these Nomu, well, they're still all pretty ridiculously strong, as the woman Nomu's able to pretty easily figure out a proper counter-attack to protect her entire team, which in turn allows Weird Head to shoot off more spikes to impale Mirko two more times. Okay, how the hell is she even still standing at this point? How is she still alive? Even by anime standards, she's looking pretty beat up. I mean, surely we're almost at the end of her run, and she'll collapse any second, right? Wrong, because she manages to pretty much destroy the containment tank before getting flung back into Endeavor, who has his own, oh shit, moment, when he sees the true extent of her injuries, which are, you know, very extensive. Man, he thought he had it rough after the fight against the high end with Hawks? This girl's missing an arm, she has a chunk out of her stomach, multiple cuts and impalements, Lots of areas of flesh with no skin at all, just exposed muscle. Ugh. And then he cauterizes her wounds to stop her bleeding to death. And she's still awake. What the hell? So anyway, he thanks her for being such a relentless badass. And I'm still not sure how this person is not straight up dead, or at least unconscious from all this ridiculous pain, but okay. Before he gets attacked by the freaky female Nomu again. And really, this one's got to be the most frightening of the bunch. Her voice, the way she speaks, her thought processes, just plain freaky if you ask me. A really compelling villain. And so, this forces Mirko to get on the mic and call for some backup, and so, present Mike and Exless, a hero who is tailor-made to be one of the first characters to get killed off in this war, go to apprehend Shigaraki and the Doctor, who's seemingly unable to awaken Shigaraki in time before Mike punches him out, but obviously, the story would end here if he doesn't wake up, so, yeah, bad luck heroes. Also, what a punch! Sent the guy flying, and it isn't even his quirk. The Doc then has a bit of a breakdown, thinking that he's failed, and that all their plans have come to nothing with this defeat, as realistically, Dead Little Army has no chance against a horde of high-powered, well-trained heroes. They need Shigaraki. One, for all the quirks and powers he does have, but two, so he can also activate Gigantomachia, and they can lay waste to the heroes. And so, Mike drags off the Doc, leaving x with Shigaraki. Good luck, buddy. And the Doc starts ranting and raving about how he came up with the Quirk Singularity Theory and was ridiculed for basically unleashing the equivalent of a Doomsday Theory on the world and was cast out of academic circles and lost his home and his life. And that after all of that, All For One saved him and gave him a new chance and this in turn inspired him to want to help All For One and established an obsession with him, treating him as if he was a god. So yeah, it was nice to have some backstory for this guy honestly. A proper reason for him to have become this spooky dooky mad scientist type of guy. And really a bit of a reason to be so enthusiastic about working for All For One. In the end, he's simply another in a long line of lost souls that All For One has manipulated towards his own ends. That's quite a good twist, honestly. And then, the real shit starts to occur. As we walk inside Shigaraki's mind, where he's getting ready to make his grand return to the world of the living. Despite the fact that his heart's apparently stopped. I mean, who needs blood flow to the brain anyway? He's got a billion quirks, I'm sure he'll be fine. But anyway, here, in the depths of his subconscious, we see that he's still wrestling with his past, and his family, as he sees visions of his family from their last day before he killed them all off. But those visions then transition into one of All For One, calling to him, the quirk that's been implanted inside of him, asking to be released, to be activated. With those subconscious visions of his family, probably his brain, his conscious talking to him, and even a representation of his grandmother, All Might's mentor, trying to remind him who he truly is. But yeah, once again, if he doesn't go all the way here, there's no story. So he chooses to follow the darker path, and he awakens, ready to unleash a slaughter upon the heroes. Poor x And that's exactly what the preview promises for next week, so get hyped. And so with all that being said, that's the end of the video, and I would like to say that these have just been my opinions, and now I'd like to hear yours. What did you think of the episode? You like it? Hate it? I'm curious for your thoughts, so make sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and let me know.